The chairman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA, last week linked the high rate of crime in Nigeria to drug addiction, stating that no fewer than 15 million Nigerians use illicit drugs. Well, joining us now to speak on causes, effects, as well as solutions of drug abuse is neuropsychiatrist Dr. Mimuna Kadri. Good morning, Dr. Mimuna. Great to have you on the morning show today. Good morning. Let me begin by asking you uh, to give us a broad understanding of how an increase in illicit drug intake is connected to an increase in crime rate. Is there a connection? Um, thank you very much. And that's a great question, especially in the recent times that we are in. Um, when you look at what illicit drugs are, generally they are um, illegal um, substances and they are highly addictive and not just about the physical um, effect but very worrisome is about the behavioral and um, you know mental related issues because they can affect the brain and when they affect the brain it's it has an effect on the individual the way the person thinks the way the person behaves and of course the way the person acts and so that's the reason why it's been an illegal substance. Um, it's, it's illegal to make, sell, and of course, use it. So how does it then affect you know, the rate at which we are having, um, especially when it comes to Nigeria, banditry, kidnapping, and of course, uh, the recent adoptions that we are having in this um, in the beginning of 2021? Because they are illicit drugs and they're highly addictive, their effect in the brain can sometimes not be reversible they can be permanent and you know the fact that individuals um this but these drugs can be mind bending mood or treating that way when people take it they may not even know understand what they are going through they may never understand how they are even acting or what they are even behaving so why it shouldn't be an issue in the why it should be an issue in the society is the fact that we have to talk about it because when you look at the percentage of individuals that are taking it is more among the adolescent and young adults and there are various reasons why they take this to experiment right because of you know they want to just know how it feels but again they have other reasons why they take it to fit in peer pressure to feel good Sometimes people take it not because they want to take it, but because they are using it to medicate for other issues they are dealing with. Anxiety, depression, which stops the rank about it. And of course, to do better, some of them use it to enhance performance. Whatever they are doing, whether it is um, um, job or whether it is um, their antisan, they use it to enhance performances. And so when we see the increase in the crime rate, we must be able to go deep down and find out what are some of the reasons, aside from economic issues that we are all facing, the use and abuse, rather, of illicit drugs is among the top um, you know, um, rank of issues that are substances that people use that can affect their mood, the way they think, the way they act, and, of course, the way they behave. You're absolutely right, uh, Doctor. Well, uh, Chairman NDLA last week had said no fewer than 15 million Nigerians are using these illicit drugs and that about 30 million Nigerians will be on drugs by 2050 if nothing is done to check the trend. Now, many people would ask, how do you check the trend? Because studies show that there are strong links between poverty, widening inequalities and drug abuse. Granted, there's more to it, right? But how do we really check the trend? So I would say 2020 happened and 2020 came with um, the global pandemic, which is um, COVID-19, right? And when we look at it, we are all collectively traumatized. So if you are traumatized right now, you are in the majority. And, and, and that opened up window to a lot of issues that people were dealing with. Some words that ordinarily that we didn't remember or we were not even aware of came into being. The isolation oxymoron word like social distancing, loneliness, quarantine, all those gave rise to the increase in the rate of abuse because it changed a lot of us, our lifestyle, because there was, there was limited or even lack of human interaction at a point in time. So looking at how do we check you know, the use or abuse of these illicit substances, it goes a long way. What are the parameters that we need to even look at to say this 
um, abuse of substances are going to increase uh, with this rate. Currently now we're talking about um, one out of every four drug user in Nigeria is a woman, mm, which is quite sad. Women are natural, naturals. And one out of every five drug user is dealing with a mental related issues. So the reason why we have to look at this statistic and can predict is that, you know, in anything you do, we have to also look at what it is that can make the business work or not to work. Drug abuse in Nigeria is on the increase because of certain things. I'll, I'll go with the four A's. They are available, they are accessible, they are affordable, and to a large extent, they are acceptable. Because cigarette smoking and alcohol, in a way, cultural is to an extent is accessible. So when somebody's abusing any of those substances, people will just trivialize it and say, it's not just smoking cigarette, forgetting there's nicotine that's addictive in it, or alcohol, forgetting the fact that it can also affect the, the brain. And the worst out of all of them is marijuana that has a 9 tetrahydrocannabinoid, which is highly addictive. So these A's are available, and there are parameters that individuals, families, and of course, the society can look at and say, how can we make these um, substances to be less available, less accessible, and of course, less affordable? Because when you look at the wrap of marijuana, how much is it? Even if those of them abusing it don't have the money, when they go to these joints, others will give them. And these days, they, they, they get them not only, even if you have a child under your roof and you believe the child doesn't go out, it can be ubered to them. And so these are some of the things that family need to nip in the board to you know, put all hands on deck and work with organizations in this area to increase awareness. And not just to say, say no to drugs, because the, the millennials and Generation Z will say, for you to say, say no to drugs, what is the no about it? Rather than say, say no to drugs, which we have seen scientifically doesn't work, is to talk about the effects of what drugs can do to the body, you know, a cognitive decline, poor academic performance, poor productivity, and of course, with the resultant uh, poor profitability and the economy of the country will definitely dip. So these are some of the ways that we can look at because the parameters are actually on the increase. Right now, we're having like 15 million. And of course, we have already seen that it will increase with the global pandemic, and of course in Nigeria, where you want to narrow down, the NSAS was not something we predicted, but NSAS came. And, you know, so a lot of issues with anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress um, disorders, and of course, um, drug addiction are there, and they are obviously on the increase as we speak right now. Indeed. Well, I hear you say a lot of things, such as communication uh, uh, is important here. I also pick from what you're saying that we are dealing with a pandemic within a pandemic. But it raises the concern of the ability of a country like Nigeria to even handle this. When you look at the staggering doctor to patient ratio that we already have, let alone specialized doctors such as yourself that we do not have enough of. So how severe is this and can we really handle it? The truth is that uh, when it comes to issues like this, it, it, it's not it doesn't just boil down to the, the government. So when we, we will be delusional to say government should handle this alone, no. It has to start from every individual in their own little space and in their own little corner. And by you know, creating more awareness, because when you look at the extreme of cases, is the treatment right? And treatment shouldn't be people dealing with drugs um, abuse or having drug addiction shouldn't be viewed as criminals. That's another end to that problem. They should be viewed as people that are ill, that are sick, and that they need medical treatment because drug addiction is a brain disease, right? But when you look at this flip side, how can we ensure, because we have um, few human resources in this area. Psychiatrists, we still have one psychiatry, psychiatrists to one million Nigerians, and every other mental practitioner in this space, there are very few. But what can we do? Awareness is very key. Media like this is very good, but of course, also creating drug clubs in secondary schools, but families also have to hold it together because the children in every family is a mirror to that family. So what can parents do to ensure that their children too do not also um, indulge in these illegal 
um, drug abuse. It's very easy for a father and mother to say, do what I say, know what I do. But if you're abusing drugs, your children are definitely going to be seeing you and they can replicate what you are doing. So for us as practitioners in this field, we are not just pointing hands to the government. It, we are all in it together, but they can do much more policies that must be implemented and work with private sector driven people to make it a public private partnership ngos are in this space enhance them with um um monetary um, um contribution to the organization to increase this awareness so that at the end of the day this partnership they work together to achieve the much desired result that we want to see if you leave it to the government alone it's not going to work but when individuals are there with a um, um, public part, uh, private partnership, including schools, family um, families involved, we will get a much um, a better result than okay. just leaving the government to do it alone. All right, Dr. Mamouni, stay with us. We'll go on a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the morning show. We're still discussing the effects and the cause of. Um, illicit drug use with Dr. Mimuna Kadiri, psychiatrist. Now, thank you for staying with us. Before we went on a break, you were talking about control. Now, let's discuss the effects of uh, drug, drug abuse more uh, and, and how it can be uh, controlled. You've taken us through this holistic definition of drug abuse. Are there really any hopes of control? And how can agencies like Pharmacists Council of Nigeria and other drug regulatory agency be more involved in the fight against this illicit drug use? Um, thank you once again. Um, control of still span through, starting from individuals, families, and of course the government getting involved. One thing we all have to understand that, you know, um, government make the policies, but we don't just want policies. We rather want policies that are implemented and, you know, properly executed. So when it comes to control, control cannot just be, you know, taking drugs off the street. Control should also come with consequences, with regards to if this is if this happens, this is what should happen. But again, let's not let's understand that a lot of these drugs that are being used are not out there openly for people to even see. Yes, you may go to the airport and find that, that somebody is traveling with marijuana, the person is caught, and then the law will take its natural course. But what about those on the streets that are selling it, that are not even looking into? Those are the people that are the worst, you know, that are our main issues because the children and people that are taking it adolescent and young adults those are the people that they can easily assess right so what are those things that can be done it does it boils down to us family members knowing who their children are and how to help them out schools implementing drug free club and also putting guidance and rules in place in helping them in of course sensitization to and to let them know the effect of you know, abusing substances and what it can lead to. Because if we all fold hands and don't do anything about it, a drunk driver can hit any of us. And, you know, it's when you are alive, you can talk, right? If somebody that is high on marijuana can carry a gun. Look at some time ago, a young girl bringing a gun to the school. Yes, that one may not be under influence of uh, any substance, but things like that, it can affect the whole family, uh, the whole society. So we are not going to just talk about policies, implementation and execution. We also have to, I'm really very concerned about the family value and the family system because it boils down to us. What are we doing in our families in ensuring that the use and abuse of substances are highly minimized and our schools, because those are two major areas where you find abuse of you know, um, substances that can easily be controlled and controlled. Where family families are involved, where schools are involved, I, that it's a very those are very strong um, bodies that can easily help in control of the abuse of substances. Indeed, and I would like to explore the family values more here as regards you know eradicating this as much as we can. We cannot shy away from the fact that the Nigerian society is a very religious one. So how important is that segment of society and are we exploring it enough? <laughs> so, I, in fact, I, I, I was trying to kind of like, okay, let me leave the religious part of yeah. my 
I know I was going to be dragged back into it. So I remember last week I was having a training on um, uh, on, on, on advocacy and they, I put the religious leaders as neutral because they, they told us to look at positive influencers, negative influencers and the neutral. And we're like, why did you put neutral? I said, the truth is that our religious um, organizations are very instrumental in any decision making we have to do in as a country because when you are in distress or when you are feeling good, these are the people that a lot of you know individuals go to either to pray for them or seek for help for spiritual awareness or spiritual um, you know upliftment. So the religious organizations too truly really play a significant role. Even if now the COVID protocol do not allow people to visit their churches and mosques as frequent as it is, but bringing them on board when there's a multi-level stakeholders meeting is very key. Because the words they say and how they, they, they talk to their congregation to, to be able to do certain things is very key. Because families belong to religious groups. Children belong to religious groups. So getting the religious organization involved too is also very instrumental. So I'm not taking them away from this because they are very, very key. But again, we also need to understand that when families do the right thing, it kind of, um, the ripple effect spread, you know, all over the society, including the religious organizations. Yes, you're absolutely right. Even the chairman NDLA also said that and charged religious leaders to, you know, use their influence to try to um, have their congregation uh, teach uh, the, the um the, the cause and effect of uh, drug use. Well, let's talk about some of those uh, drugs, like codeine, which is one of the most abused drug in Nigeria, which was banned by the federal government in 2018, right? Reports indicate that this opiate has found its way back to the market. As dangerous as it is, the Nigerian Senate also estimated that 3 million bottles of this codeine or this, the codeine in the syrup are drunk every day, especially in the north where banditry and criminality is at its peak. It does appear to be a vicious cycle, right? I mean, is banning the substance it enough? <laughs> it is. It is in the sense that now it can even be worse. So, you know, studies are there, right? But we don't have studies being churned out as frequent as it is. And some studies are, take a longer period for us to see the resultant effect of what you know we are having. So I would say right now, what this, what we are seeing as 15 million people affected is way more than that. That is for sure. It's way more than that. Why? Because with the COVID-19 happening last year, a lot of us have to change our lifestyle, the isolation, the social distancing. People were looking for things to... Um, enhance their mood. People were medicating for anxiety and depression. There was a lot of fear, uh, you know, um, panic, um, confusion. So codeine, which is the one people that use it more than the females and the males, right? And it's sweet. It has its medical effect, but it's the abuse of it that is the main problem. So with the COVID-19 happening, with the NSAS, there's really an increase in the abuse of codeine. And, you know, for such a drug, um, even the ban, we do know that they see the bad dog um, selling and people uh, buying from illegal um, um, outlets and all that. Now, how do we ensure that that can still further be curtailed because the government has put a ban, right? But they are seeing this illicit um, or illegal um, uh, abuse and sales all over the place. Is it boils down to the family? Is it boils down to us as individuals? Because we know people that abuse this thing. We, 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 we have them in our families. We have them in our circle. How do you influence um, them to ensure that this is not what they need at this point in time? Because the thing is that if we all keep quiet, it can come back to affect us. Because when they are high, it's mind is it's mood altering, it's mind bending, mm -hmm. and it can affect the way they think, they act, and they behave. If, if, they, if they act under the influence of any of these substances, like the coding you're talking about, and you die, this person can and get a good lawyer. They can go to court and you know can be bailed because they say it was under the influence of this and uh, drug or this and you know the thing is, we as individuals must play a role. Let's not just leave it to it is that family or it is this person or it's not affecting me. It can affect you. It can it, it, even in the worst case scenario, even if you are in your house, it can affect you because somebody who is under the influence can decide to go on a gun spring, you know, um, um you know, mission. So we 
as individuals and as families, I will keep nipping it in the bud. Yes, the religious leaders have their role to play. Yes, the pharmaceutical uh, organization have their role to play. Yes, the schools have their role to play. But when it starts from the family, we get to have better results. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this program. You've been such a delight.